When an advertiser boycott closed in on Bill O'Reilly last year, Fox News announced that O'Reilly was going on vacation. He never returned from that vacation. And last week, when an advertiser boycott started by my next guest, David Hogg, was building against Laura Ingram, Fox News announced that she was going on vacation. Vacation is the scariest place for a Fox News host to be when advertisers are boycotting a show. There are now 15 advertisers, these 15 advertisers, boycotting Laura Ingram's show, Expedia, Hulu, Nestle, Nutrish, TripAdvisor, Wayfair, Johnson & Johnson, Stitch Fix, Office Depot, Jenny Craig, Atlantis Paradise, uh, I, <clears throat> Atlantis Paradise Island, Liberty Mutual, Ruby Tuesday, Bayer, Miracle Ear. Today was the first business day when Fox did not lose another advertiser to the boycott. And so this afternoon, Fox issued this statement. We cannot and will not allow voices to be censored by agenda-driven intimidation efforts. We look forward to having Laura Ingram back hosting her program next Monday when she returns from spring vacation with her children. That statement by Fox conveniently overlooks the fact that Bill O'Reilly was indeed driven from Fox News by an agenda-driven effort. The agenda was to stop sexual harassment in the workplace, specifically stop Bill O'Reilly's sexual harassment. And it worked because all of the names of the companies you see behind me right now boycotted Bill O'Reilly's show. And that's who drove him off TV, the advertisers. Fox News was going to let Bill O'Reilly sexually harass as many women as he wanted to for as long as he wanted to, and they were going to help him settle lawsuits with those women for as long as he wanted them to do that, but they were not going to let him lose advertisers for Fox News. That was crossing Fox News's line. And so those advertisers who drove Bill O'Reilly out of television probably saved an unknown number of women working at Fox News right now from being sexually harassed by Bill O'Reilly in the workplace. And now, of course, Bill O'Reilly hates boycotts. So O'Reilly rose in defense of Laura Ingram today on Twitter. He said that the boycott is being directed by powerful, shadowy, radical groups who want Laura Ingram off the air. Here is a picture of the leader of those powerful, shadowy, radical groups. That's 17-year-old David Hogg. That's his Twitter photograph. And here is the tweet that publicly launched the boycott. It got 55,000 retweets, 128,000 likes, and that is something advertisers must pay attention to. It is impossible to conceive of a more peaceful form of protest than a tweet or a boycott. In fact, boycotts were invented at a potentially explosive moment in history as an alternative to violent protest. Charles Boycott was the local rent collector in County Mayo in Ireland for an English lord who owned the land that peasant farmers tried to scrape out a living on or at least enough food to eat. With harvests dropping toward famine levels and farmers unable to make their rent, Charles Boycott was especially ruthless with evictions. In a protest to reduce rents, the local Irish refused to pay their rents to Mr. Boycott and refused to help with the harvest on lands controlled by Mr. Boycott. After that, Charles Boycott's last name became a verb and within a year, led to new, fairer rent laws in Ireland. In the 138 years since then, peaceful boycotts have been launched around the world with mixed results. Sometimes they succeed, sometimes they don't. But every time, every time, boycott, boycotts are always called unfair by the people who are getting boycotted, including, of course, the target of the most successful recent TV advertiser boycott, Bill O'Reilly, whose Irish culture once depended on the invention of the boycott for its very survival. Joining us now, David Hogg, a senior at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. David, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, I want to go, first of all, to what Bill O'Reilly said about you today and what you're doing. He said... Uh, that you and the boycott are being directed by powerful, shadowy, 
radical groups. What's your reaction to that? Thanks for seeing me as powerful. I don't see myself as such. I mean, I, I mean I'm pretty well lit. I don't see any shadowy figures behind me. Um, it, I mean, honestly, if he sees powerful shadowy, shadowy groups, is corporate America standing with us? Okay. I guess it doesn't really make sense. But what I want to get on from is the negativity in this situation, and I want to focus on what's ahead for our movement. It's really what we need to be focusing on is the positivity and really bringing everybody together. And that's the first thing that we have coming up are the town halls on April 7th that we're trying to get in every congressional district. And I, I think what, when Bill says these things, um, and when Laura says these things, it, I, I'm fine when they disagree with my policies. That's absolutely okay. What I have a problem with is when they attack me or anybody else personally, why? What does that accomplish? It doesn't make any sense. I'm not, I don't have any shadowy figures behind me, at least I don't, I don't see any. Um, I'm pretty well lit and I'm just a kid that uses Twitter and if he, if he sees me as powerful, that's okay. I don't see myself that way. But honestly, we're trying to use our First Amendment rights and so is corporate America. And if he stands against that, that's fine, but we're gonna, they're standing with us and we're gonna stand with them too. Uh, I want to show a photograph of uh, Emma Gonzalez and what was done. This is an, another way in which people uh, on the right, the pro-NRA people, have tried to distort what's going on here, especially with you as individual protesters. They took a photograph of Emma Gonzalez ripping up a target that's used for gun target practice, and they photoshopped that into her ripping up a copy of the Constitution and claiming... Uh, well, first of all, that she was ripping up a copy of the Constitution, and therefore that's what uh, she was all about. What was your reaction to that? I think it's kind of ironic that many of the people that create this content are always saying that there's so much fake news out there when oftentimes they're the ones that perpetrate and create it. It's, di it's disgusting. It's dangerous to our democracy, and it's just wrong. We're, we're kids that are just trying to save lives. These people working against us, they, they aren't really doing anything other than getting in our way. And what we need to do here is come together as Americans. And when, when, when people use divisive language, like we see on the right and the left of this issue, like calling things the right and the left and not just American, it doesn't help anything because we need to come together. We need to go to these town halls. I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're a Democrat. We're all Americans. Let's get together and solve this issue together. Uh, I want to read a tweet from John Huey, who was a former publisher of Time magazine, and he responded to Bill O'Reilly's uh, tweet about uh, the boycott being this conspiracy. He said, advertisers pull money when they come to believe the show they're sponsoring has crossed some line that is going to cost them customers and money. They are largely apolitical, market-driven capitalists with radar for brand damage. And David, that comes from someone whose business depended on the selling of advertising and the maintenance uh, of good relationships with advertisers. Uh, and so when you, when you hear uh, Bill O'Reilly imagining this about what's going on uh, with you and what's going on with your classmates down in, in Parkland, Florida, if you, could, if you could talk to Bill O'Reilly for a minute, what would you try to tell him? Corporate America is on the side of justice. You, with the sexual harassment, they stood with those, the victims of that to ensure that nobody else would have to suffer through that. And they, they're trying to stand with us too to prevent the bullying that we've seen. And again, I don't want this to be about the negativity of the situation. I, I want this to be Americans discussing this with each other. That's what we need. We need positivity and we need to work together. But when these people continue to try to divide us and distract from what the real mission here is, which is saving kids' lives because they're trying to attack us on a personal level, not even our policies. I am absolutely fine with people criticizing our policies. What I'm not okay with is when people attack me and my friends who are survivors of a mass murder on a personal level. What does that accomplish? David, Honestly. Uh, quickly before you go, uh, give us again what's going on next. Uh, April 7th, you mentioned? Yeah. So on April 7th, we're going to have a, we're trying to have a town hall in every congressional district. People can go to um, the town hall project townhallproject.org to see if there's one in their area and if there's not they can create an event and it's a really great way for everybody to make their voices heard so please i urge you to go to townhallproject.org and see if there's an event in your area if there's not make one david hogg really appreciate you joining us tonight thank you very much david hey there i'm chris hayes from msnbc thanks for watching msnbc on youtube if you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos